Welcome to another adventure with Getting Lost. As you can see here, we are starting with a little bit of history. There is this plaque here. And this plaque commemorates the visit by the Duchess of Kent and her son, the Duke of Kent, in 1952 to Singapore. And they renamed this area to Kent Ridge Park. Previously, Kent Ridge Park and the National University of Singapore area, this area here, was formerly known as Pase Panjang Ridge. So now, we are actually walking along South Buena Vista Road, heading towards the entrance of Kent Ridge Park. And the first thing we see here is actually a chempedak tree. Chempedak is actually a Southeast Asian fruit that grows to, the fruit itself grows to quite a big fruit with lots of seeds. And this is one of the trees. Okay, you can actually travel this road by bus. As you can see here, this there's a bus stops along this route here. The bus you take is bus 200. So you can actually travel easier. And it is a bit eerie uh, walking along the road with the trucks and cars just passing, sp speeding right past you. You know, this area here is interesting because the area to my right here now, as you can see, lots and lots of thick, big rainforest trees. You know, this area here itself is the outskirt of Kenridge Park. And there's lots of natural vegetation. And you see there's a building over there. That building itself is actually Science Park 1. Okay. And also, this is the Casualty Evacuation Point A. I wonder how many casualties you have to have more than one casualty point. And also, you notice, I think the park itself does have some soil erosion problem. And also, there are actually pathways inside the park itself. As you can see, there's a bridge there. You know, so, there are some uh, soil erosion erosion problems in the park itself because uh, you can see there's a they actually put some rem remedial uh, remedy on this slope here as we continue walking down here as you can see uh, less evidence of um, civilization and more evidence of trees Lots and lots of trees, look at that. This walk here reminds me of um, driving up uh, towards uh, Genting, you know, with the winding roads. And here we are now. We are at the entrance of Kenridge Park. This is a Vigilante Drive. And here is where we need to walk up. It is a very steep walk, as you can see here. This is the map of Cambridge Park and we actually came in from here then South Buena Vista Road walk all the way in and there we are now If we go up we hit Car Park A there are two ponds or we can continue going up to the top and then visit the Canopy Walk So this that could be a plan and forward from Canopy Walk you can actually continue walking towards Hot Park which we did the adventure previously. Yes, Hot Park. We were at Hot Park previously. Anyway, so I guess we are going to take the first way up here. Oh, look at this. This is Casualty Evacuation Point D. So there's more than one Casualty Evacuation Point. Anyway, um, it's a short and very steep walk up this hill. Okay, so basically you have two choices. You can either walk up this steep hill, which is a short walk, or you can take a longer walk from Hot Park, which also you need to climb up a hill, but the hill is not as steep, but the hill distance is longer. Actually, no, the hill distance is also the same. Anyway, 
we are still walking up here because it is a bit steep I think on, honestly for me I feel the getting up here from this direction it would be better if you have a car that is much the easiest way to do it is with a car you know going up here bicycling no walking okay but it will be tiring because you're walking at a very steep incline so you'll be walking a lot past lots of trees on your left and right with shrubbery everywhere because you're now walking in Kent Ridge Park and Kent Ridge Park actually has a lot of history which we'll explain later wait a minute no that will be in part 2 part 2 we'll explore the history the World War 2 history of Kent Ridge Park that will be interesting but today what we're going to do first is we I think we're going to do a uh, different routes instead of going all the way to the top which if we continue on this road and then turn right and continue up we will finally reach the top because af after this we are already more than halfway up the hill already but what we're going to do instead is we're going to take a small detour here we are actually now at car park A yes car park A This unassuming car park. What's here? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go to car park A here, walk past the pavilion, and then we're going to visit a little pond. Yes, a pond. Yes, so basically we need to walk past the car park here. There are actually people who park their car here. I wonder why. Because when I'm walking through the park, I didn't really see many people. Anyway, so we're actually in walk past car park A and some information on some maps here. And we're just going to continue walking down. It's a very nice uh, jungle walk here. You know, you can see... Um, plants and trees everything on both sides so we just continue walking down and one thing i noticed that as i was walking down here we are actually walking downhill yeah downhill so all the effort we took to walk up the hill to car park a was actually minimized by us going to look for the pond <laughs> anyway the name of the pond is actually Kenridge Pond so what's so interesting about the pond well I actually don't know what's so interesting about the pond but I guess we will see when we get there as we continue down the hill so we walked up the hill now we're going down the hill but at a much, 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 much lower incline. So, it's a very leisurely walk, which is quite nice. And trees left and right. And even though the tarmac is a bit wet, but not slippery. So it's quite good. It's quite well maintained. You know, it is sweeping quite well. Anyway, we're coming out here, which looks like to me there is uh, other pathways crisscrossing here. And I see some buildings. If I'm not mistaken, that building over there is actually Norm Normanton Park condominium. So there's actually a condominium that is directly next to the park. So the people who live there have a very nice access to the park. And once I got down the hill, I've noticed through these trees here, there's actually water there. So this is the, the pond that we're looking for, hidden by all these trees, which I find a bit weird. Normally, you know, when you have a pond, you, know, you don't, really, don't the views are not normally blocked. Anyway, in front of that, 
we actually have this place here where they are trying uh, to grow back okay because previously uh, the first inhabitants of the of the hill here used to grow cr uh, crash crops for, uh, for for sale and some of the things they, they grew here like pineapple gambia uh, pepper you know, some of the herbs and spices they actually grew on the hill here and this this place here is trying to recreate the environment so they're actually growing some uh, pineapple trees and I think this is a pepper tree okay and then also it looks like uh, some palm oil tree too so it's very interesting at the moment the, the place is not fully grown yet but here we are now we are at the pond so at this part of the pond you can actually see the whole pond and the pond the water that comes to the pond i think is probably the overflow from the uh, trees itself from the uh, can reach part itself so it flows down into this pond here and i don't know if you can see this if you look at some of the palm trees there they are actually dragonflies flying around but i quite like this pond you know it's not it's quite tranquil and very how do i say untouched because they left the trees at the side there so it's a bit untouched and living in this pond itself i'm there are still a lot of turtles and fishes and on top of it butterflies and dragonflies which are, you can see them flying around but this is the pond itself right next to it just a short distance there is a smaller pond which is named dragonfly pond yes so this environment has been created specifically for dragonflies so there are lots and lots of aquatic uh, plants so those plants that actually roots the roots that actually are into the they are in the water itself as you can see here the water itself is also quite shallow it's not very deep but even in this pond itself there are lots of uh, turtles in here and lots of dragonflies so this environment here is suitable for the dragonflies because they have created this but this whole environment so that they can flourish and in here uh, you can actually see the dragonflies but unfortunately uh, I can't really catch many of them because I think we are at the season where the butterfly the dragonflies are a bit small they haven't grown big yet but it's a very really nice little stagnant pond here not for people to swim in not for people to play in but just for you to observe and there are also a bit of uh birds you know living into in this environment too and the backdrop is the forest which is quite interesting and lots of turtles like i said earlier anyway i found this place very very interesting and very educational i am dragonfly educated Anyway, beside it is just an open field with a lot of uh, trees. But other than that, this uh, so far is the highlight of the trip for part one. Because I'm going to stop here because we're actually down, down the hill and I don't want to climb up again. What I will do instead is I will enter Cambridge Park again, but this time from Hot Park. Yes, that will be part two. Anyway. Thank you very much for joining me for part one of my Kenridge Park Adventure. This is a very interesting park with lots of history. World War II history coming up in part two. Hope you stay for that. 
which will be coming up next week. And thank you very much for joining me for my adventure. Please like, share and subscribe and don't forget to join me for my next adventure. Bye-bye.